This module will evaluate the anatomy of the mandible as viewed on a full mouth radiographic examination. You should be familiar with the layout of an FMX that we use at UCLA, and you should be familiar with the locations of the periapical and bite wing radiographs from the various anatomic sites. In the previous module, we carefully identified the teeth and we systematically evaluated the maxillary anatomy. We next move on to the mandible, starting with the left mandibular posterior region. These radiographs should show the mandibular premolars and molars. Note that the mesial aspect of the first premolar is not seen. However, the premolar bite wing does adequately demonstrate this region and no retake of this radiograph is required. We start by identifying the teeth, evaluating the morphology of the crowns, evaluating restorations, and examining the zone of dentin adjacent to the restorations. Next, identify the pulp space and trace the pulp canals from the pulp chambers to the apical foramen. Assess for calcifications in the pulp and any localized areas of dilation that may suggest resorption. Next, evaluate the roots, assessing the root length, the crown root ratio, and noting any dilacerations in the root. Note that the region of the furcation is better visualized on mandibular molars than it is on maxillary molars. Trace the lamina dura and periodontal ligament space along the length of the root. Note a diffuse radiopacity adjacent to the distal root of the mandibular first molar. This is an area of osteosclerosis, which is an anatomic variant. You should visualize this area in more detail to ensure that an intact lamina dura can be traced around the root apex. Next, identify the anatomic structures in the region. This includes the external oblique ridge, the inferior alveolar canal, and the inferior border of the mandible. Outline the cortical borders of the inferior alveolar canal. Remember that the cortical borders of the canal may not always be well defined. Note the proximity of the canal to the apices of the adjacent teeth and to any impacted teeth. Identify the mental foramen, typically located between the roots of the mandibular premolars. Note that when the inferior alveolar canal is superimposed over the root apex, it may cause the periodontal ligament space to appear wider. The presence of an intact lamina dura will be indicative of the absence of periapical disease. Identification of the inferior alveolar canal is critical for endodontic treatment planning for mandibular molars. When the root apices are in close proximity to the inferior alveolar canal, there is an increased risk for nerve damage from endodontic over-instrumentation. Likewise, identification of the inferior alveolar canal is critical when placing implants in the posterior mandibular region. Given the inherent distortions with periapical and panoramic imaging, CBCT imaging is the modality of choice for both these situations. Note that the trabecular bone on the inferior portion of the radiograph appears slightly more radiolucent. This is a projection of the submandibular fossa a depression on the lingual surface of the mandible. This is an anatomic variation and can be seen on both periapical and panoramic imaging. We next move on to the mandibular anterior region. These radiographs should show the incisors and the canines. Start by systematically identifying the teeth. Evaluate the crowns for morphology and caries. Note that in these radiographs, the incisal edges of the teeth are not demonstrated. Ideally, the radiograph should demonstrate the entire tooth length from the incisal edge to the root apex. Trace the periodontal ligament space and lamina dura around every root. Note that in our patient, there are diffuse radio opacities over the canine and premolar regions bilaterally. These represent areas of mandibular tori this is an anatomic variation, and of course, you can confirm this with a quick clinical examination. Note the genial tubercles that appear as a diffuse radiopacity in the midline. Only you may see the opening of the lingual foramen adjacent to the genial tubercles. Next, we move on to the right mandibular posterior region, and we will follow the same systematic sequence. Identify the teeth, evaluate the crowns and roots, evaluate the pulp space, outline the roots, and identify the periodontal ligament space and lamina dura. Identify the inferior alveolar canal and assess its proximity to the root apices. Identify the mental foramen and finally recognize the radiolucency of the submandibular fossa. With that, we have completed a systematic evaluation of the anatomy on the periapical radiographs and the next step would be to evaluate the bite wing radiographs.